Uh, next question is about alignment. So in certain cases, um, uh, you have a set uh, size right now for, for the Zepto, mm -hmm. uh, which results in a 5.2 millimeter capsulotomy. Um, there are some doctors who like to do pupil center. There are some doctors who would prefer to do it um, uh, based on the Purkinje. Uh, the recommendation from Minosis is to uh, use the first and fourth Purkinje. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to those doctors who prefer pupil center? Well, I think that the whole centration question is still evolving, I would say. You know, I, th I think that, you know, the evidence, certainly for monofocal lenses, I think, are, are really debatable. I think for a multifocal lens, I think that there's certainly enough theoretical reasons to have it well-centered as much as you can on the visual axis, which, um, you know, the pupil was not dilated, you can determine, but a dilated pupil is very hard to really know the pupil centration. Mm -hmm. And, of course, when the pupil dilates, the centration center of the pupil does move as well. So, uh, you know, really, if you're going to use pupil center centered uh, approaches, you want to use an undilated pupil. Mm. Uh, but the pupil, but, uh, but an undilated pupil is different than a dilated pupil in terms of centration. So I, I really recommend using uh, the uh, first Purkin GM, that's typically what I use, mm. uh, centering, centering an IOL or centering the capsulotomy. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty easy to use, actually, making sure, this, making sure the microscope and the eye is, is coaxial. Mm. And uh, I think with that approach, it's, uh, it's ideal from that perspective. You know, if you're not sure what to do, uh, I think we know, of course, that uh, with Angle Kappa, that majority of, of, uh, of folks have about a 0.2 to, you know, 0.3 within that range millimeter, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, nasalization of the visual mm -hmm. axis a bit. So slightly place the uh, the, the zepto capsule to be slightly nasal, and that that typically would cover it if you're, if you're not sure. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of size, it's a 5.2 millimeter designed capsulotomy cut. But well, this will vary, of course, depending on the age of the patient. Mm, yes. If you're doing a very young patient that's, that's really elastic, that capsulotomy may end up being a bit larger than 5.2, which is okay. That means you have a bit of breathing room. If it gets 5.5, 5.6, you still have a good capsule overlap. In a much older patient with, uh, with less elasticity of the capsule, the uh, capsulotomy will be more around 5.2. Mm. So, we, of course, we know this with femto laser, too. We don't, we don't dial in femto at 5.5. We dial, I dial mine like to 4.9. But once you do the cut, you know, the, the elasticity changes, you remove the central button of the capsule, things expand. And we don't realize this when we do capsule rexus because when we do capsule rexus, we're, start, we're already cut, punching the capsule, the capsule's relaxed. We do the rexus dynamically and we basically can adjust according to any changes in the elasticity. So, um, but uh, 5.2 I think this works really well. As you saw in the videos, it provides a really good overlap. I think that's, that's gonna be good for the majority of cases.